Yes, it was the biggest fight of the year. A legacy-defining bout full of nostalgia, intrigue, and most of all, excitement. <laughs> and then Benny Boy went and bollocksed it all up. Bloody hell, Connor, you great big gonk. Anyway, as the fight was postponed and the scandal stole the headlines, the public wanted just one thing, some answers. We were told to wait for the science. We were told all is not as it seems. And we were told, don't worry, everything will come out. It's going to play out and you're going to get all the information. Now two months on, the storm has calmed a little. So let's have a look exactly where we are now with the Connor Ben situation. Uh, fuck knows, to be honest, it's all still tits up. But anyway, let's have a look at the timeline. The news broke of the failed test. The fight was in jeopardy. Then the British Boxing Board of Control issued their statement prohibiting the fight. Bloody hell, was it officially off? Well, just hold on a minute. He had failed a VADA test, but passed his UCAD tests that are recognised by the governing bodies. There was still a chance, but Eddie then dropped a bombshell. How long have you yourself known about it? Is this morning the same as with everyone else? We both companies have known about this for a couple of weeks. We were all double shocked to hear that this had been kept quiet. But in the meantime, we all said, well, what is this banned substance found in his system? The female fertility drug clomiphene that's known to boost testosterone. How could this get in his body? Well, let's ask a man that will surely know the answer to this. Yes, old Benny Boy's doctor, Mr. Rusman. He'll have a perfectly reasonable explanation for all this. Let's give him a call. Uh. Oh. No, Dr. Rusman had well and truly fucked off. He took down his website, so it was still a mystery. But the public workout was due to go ahead. Everything was still up in the air. Would the fighters even appear? Later that afternoon, Connor finally did appear. He grabbed the mic and gave us exactly what we expected him to say. Yeah, no, I can't believe it, bruv. Do you know what I mean? I finished crushing it in the gym earlier. Then I went home and started watching Uncle Proper on YouTube, laughing me bollocks off. He's brilliant, that bloke, ain't he? You seen him. Anyway, Eddie ran me on the blower and said I'd failed a test. I said, you're fucking joking, fucking liberty. Yes, so we waited with bated breath for an outcome. Thursday the 6th of October, the press conference due at 2pm. The atmosphere was frosty. Then Eddie delivered the final verdict. We wanted to come here today and, and formally announce that uh, Chris Eubank Jr. against Connor Ben has been officially postponed. So the fight was cancelled, but according to Matchroom, it was only postponed. Either way, we were all gutted. The wind taken out of our sails, but none of us were anywhere near as unhappy as this bloke. Yeah, you'd be fuming, wouldn't you? So what happened next? October the 8th, remarkably Eubank Jr. made the wait, but in posting a picture looking like fucking Gollum, the heat on Connor Ben and the promoters intensified further. People said should they have tried to let this go ahead, and how unethical was Connor Ben to be fighting a weight drain man whilst he himself was on a banned drug that improved his ability. October the 10th, the first breaking news was our old mate Dr. Rusman again. He was back in the headlines. Video surfaced of him saying how easy it was to get around random drug testing and that 80% of athletes are already on banned substances. I mean, bloody hell, where did Connor find this bloke? He don't sound like a doctor, more like some knobhead who's got a B-Tech in science and bought himself a fucking stethoscope. But then, October the 12th, on the same day that Connor Ben broke his silence with a damning Instagram post aimed towards the public and the media, news broke of a second failed test. Uh, well, that was bad timing, Benny boy. Now, was this true? How could this be? October the 15th, only a few days later, it was confirmed that UCAD would converse with the board in an investigation into the failed test. So Connor took action hiring one of the world's leading sports lawyers, Mike Morgan. Hopefully he didn't get recommended in by the same bloke who recommended Dr. Bloody Usman. And then, October the 17th, Connor's father Nigel dropped an unexpected bombshell in an interview whilst on tour with Eubank Senior, saying this. So much that I would love to say, because we knew about this three months ago, when they said there was a trace in it, but we're carrying on training. Hey? Eh? Hang on a minute, I thought it was a couple of weeks. Both companies have known about this for a couple of weeks. Yeah, but Nigel saying three months. Surely that's a mistake. <laughs> Ah, right, it was a mistake. Oh, don't worry, people. Thank heavens for that. I know what it's like. I got mixed up in a similar way when I was talking to my mate just last decade. Sorry, I meant last week. Ah, oh, what a silly sausage. I've done it again. Anyway, don't worry, people. It was just a slip of the tongue from Nigel. Yeah.
bollocks. Anyway, following on from this, it was a quiet few days until the 21st of October when Connor was required to attend a hearing with the board, to which he said, fuck em, I'm not going, and relinquished his license simultaneously, which made the news on the 26th of October. This animosity towards the board had us all a bit confused. I mean, surely this was Ben's own fault, and the board actually did the only ethical thing by calling off the fight, albeit a bit late. But that same day, Eddie reveals that he thinks the board leaked the article that caused all the mayhem, which may explain most of the anger, and also revealed that Connor was breaking his silence with a mainstream media interview the very next day. Um, he's had several uh, newspaper interviews today. I just want him to have the chance to tell his side, which will happen ultimately this week. Yes, the 27th of October, the moment we had all been waiting for, a no holds barred interview with the sun, the all out open truth in the times, we were finally about to see the reason behind this ruddy mess, and we didn't. We just got Ben moaning about the board, thinks he was contaminated, shock, and that he actually failed two tests. Hold on a minute, bloody hell, another failed test. Well, so much for Dr. B Tech over here. His one claim to fame was being able to get around random testing and he fucked it up twice. The donut. Anywho, it turned out the first failed test by Varda was on the 25th of July, producing results around late August. And the second was taken on the 1st of September, producing results on the 23rd, both showing traces of the clomiphene drug, which makes this kind of not true. Known about this for a couple of weeks. And this very true. We knew about this three months ago. The interview did outline one important thing though. As we predicted, Ben insisted it is most likely a case of contamination, but mentioned a particular food. Yes, eggs. And he's been doing his research. He spoke of a 2020 World Anti-Doping Agency study that looked into whether poultry and eggs are a source of minute amounts of clomiphene in doping control samples. But just how many eggs is he eating then? Well, he claims to consume around 30 to 34 eggs a week. And, uh, bloody hell, that's quite a lot, isn't it? If he stood by a bonfire, he'd probably turn into a fucking omelette. But who knows, maybe this is the reason. The truth really is still to be told. And it's going to be a long process for Ben. It's already been difficult. I bet he's absolutely exhausted. Oh, come on, that's a cheap shot proper. No puns, come on, people. No, but seriously, though, I did feel sorry for him the day it all came out. He looked like the shell of a man. Nah, leave it now, seriously, come on. Anyway, I do hope this is resolved. And I do honestly hope he proves his innocence. I'm certainly egging him on. All right, sorry, that was the last one. But yes, finally, we move Move on to the very latest, stated on November the 11th by Eddie Hearn, that Ben's hearing is well underway. The fate lies in the hands of the boxing gods, and who knows what the outcome will be. Whether he will receive a ban or a slap on the wrist, whether he will fight again in Britain, or whether he will fight again at all, is yet to be determined. But here we are. So, uh, yeah, that's it really. It was a bit of a pointless video, to be honest, wasn't it? I bet you thought you might learn something new about the Ben situation, and you found out what you already fucking know. Cheers, proper. Ah, well, we've had a laugh. If Ben does get away with all this on grounds of egg contamination, though, he really has cracked it, any. he? All right, sorry, no, that's enough. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you double soon. Bosh.